What is going on, Movie Meals? We brought the Bulls back. If you watched our Lightyear review, you would you would know what the Bulls represent. And today they represented another helmet, this time for our boy, Boba Fett and Mandalorian. We're here for Boba Fett, review of the season, season one, book of Boba Fett. Let's just get into it. All spoilers all the time. Thank you to Kimberly Karen and the Moon Meal patrons. Go get some merch. I'll link down in the description. Kyle, let's just, you say whatever you want. What'd you think of the show? I don't want to talk <laughs> to you about it, to be honest. Because <laughs> you already know what I'm going to say. I know, I know. You're with everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm with everybody. It's an odd show. It really is. Like, even from the get-go, the show felt like it had a hard time wanting to be a show about Boba Fett. Like, I was seeing stuff happening that was connecting the dots with Boba Fett in the past and then leaning up towards, I guess, present-day Star Wars. I guess, think about it in terms of timelines, whatever. But it just never was able to grab me and hook me in wanting to care about Boba Fett's journey to trying to be like a, a, I guess, a slum lord of Tatooine, because I never really understood what his real drive and motivation was to do it, and nor did I understand, like how bad he was at the job, but no one really addressed it. Like it seemed everyone around him knew he was bad at the job, but it never just got around to being addressed. It, we just was kind of rolling with it. And it just was weird. And then the second half of the show, you know, there was some cool moments such as uh, Mando coming back for a full episode and not to mention all of the, you know, the great Star Wars stuff that we got in episode six. But it, it just felt like everything else about Star Wars was cool about this show, but not so much the actual point of the show, which was supposed to be, you know, a story of getting us to know more about Boba Fett and what happened to him after Return of the Jedi. And, I'm bummed by that because I really wanted to, you know, be able to see like, okay, why do we really need a show for Boba Fett? But I just think they missed the mark. Um, and all the technical stuff is good with this show. So I can't say like, it's such a terrible show. How dare they ruin this character? No, it's nothing like that. It's just, I think they just missed the mark in terms of storytelling for uh, Boba Fett, the character to give us a bit more. Um than what we've gotten out of him from, you know, the original trilogy and Clone Wars and that sort of thing. So th those are my uh, kind of quick thoughts. Uh, what about you, Alice? You know, I love the Clone Wars, but they, I don't think, do a great job with Boba Fett. I think him sure. being a little kid bounty hunter is very much George being friendly to the kids who are watching um, yeah. to just keep a cool character. Again, we're talking all spoilers. The episode six... Cad Bane shows up. Luke Skywalker looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, fantastic. The, the CGI got even better. And you know that they were in the news a while back when somebody, some fan on YouTube deep faked again what they had did. And he did it better than what they did in Mandalorian season two. So then they hired him. And now he's on this job. Apparently the voice cool. was all a recreation of like Mark Hamill talking into a mic and then a computer generating it to make it sound like what he did years ago. Um, yeah. And it was flawless. Like they can truly make a whole series with doing that with Luke Skywalker. I truly believe it. And I didn't like it when they <laughs> were doing it with Carrie yeah. Fisher in rise of Skywalker, but I liked it more here. I don't know if I want to show, cause I still think, you know, recasting is okay. Um, <clears throat> But I, I liked the show. It wasn't my favorite. I, 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 you know, it is the book of Boba Fett. Not every chapter in a book is about the main character. So I'm okay with those moments where it's very Mando driven. It does feel a bit weird. There is some motivation lacking in Boba Fett. I never grew up like this. You know, this is kind of the same feeling I, I get when I, because I love The Last Jedi so much of, of Luke. You know, I didn't grow up with just the, the, the original trilogy and then, and then all of a sudden I could just hate on the prequels when they came out. I grew up with the prequels. I'm a prequel kid. And as much as I hate the sequels, I understand that there are kids growing up with the same thing I had with the sequels. Um, and so for me, Boba Fett was, I knew him more through his dad as Django. And I knew him as Boba Fett. I knew he was ruthless, all that stuff. I love that we basically get exactly what 
the Parks and Rec joke with Pat Patton Oswald is of of like yeah. I loved seeing the cuts where it was like Patton Oswald being like Sons of Tatooine, we pan down the Boba Fett gauntlet rises up. I thought it was so funny. Um, I liked all the stuff with with him learning to be a Tuscan. I actually thought that was really cool that this ruthless killer. You know, when when you think about it and you really pay attention to the timeline, the show makes it go by fast. But he was with that Tuscan tribe for five years as a prisoner to then becoming one of them for five years. Oh, God, had no idea. Had I no know. Idea. You, you, you got to be a deep cut guy to do that. And I don't think they cared. Um, I do think Robert Rodriguez put some weird things in terms of action in there. You know, I was talking to, to Tanner actually last night about it. And he, mm-hmm. uh, he was saying, you know, because the, the episode he likes the least of Mandalorian season two or, or the action scenes he likes the least are very much the Robert Rodriguez ones. And yeah, and I kind of get it. I get the Internet is losing their minds over the spin over the one like Power Ranger guy spinning and then shooting. Um, I'm actually okay with the way the bikes looked. I know they did stick out and that little gang stuck out, but I, I thought they were just trying to pay homage to George's American Graffiti. And I love that movie, American Graffiti. <clears throat> it's just weird and on a desert planet. It, it is a like bit it weird. Wor- For yeah. me, it works enough because I know they're paying homage. It is weird. I mean, the first thing I said sure. out loud was, oh. But then I started thinking about <laughs> it, and I'm, I'm okay with, with the love. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it, it's funny. People are, like, coming for R- Rodriguez's head. But uh, John Favreau wrote the finale. Like I, I I saw a quote that I really liked a tweet from uh, John Roca actually, and he was mm. saying you know people are attacking you know uh, uh, um, a fellow um, I believe Robert Rodriguez is Mexican American and you can correct mm-hmm. me if I'm I'm wrong but he was saying you know he's he's attacking um, you know everybody's attacking him somebody of, of of a different race a different color but nobody is arguing and saying fire John Favreau who wrote these episodes and wrote the finale and same with Dave Filoni did a lot of work. So, and I think there is a little bit of fair there. I'm still okay with Robert Rodriguez doing star Wars. Everybody's jumped on board now that it has to be Bryce Dallas Howard. And I'm very much okay with that, but it's funny because after the first season of Mandalorian, Bryce Dallas Howard was being considered the worst of all of the directors who got a shot. And people are denying it. I've seen so much of it on Twitter. People being like, I always love Bryce Dallas Howard's stuff. But that episode she did in season one of Mandalorian got attacked. Do you remember which, which one was one hers again? She did the one where they're on the planet and he, he saves the townspeople and he first meets Cara Dune and he like, they stopped the ATAT and all that stuff. <clears throat> oh, that was like the forest the one, trenches. right? Yeah. Or the swamp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, okay. I get that. that episode was, it was fine. It's yeah, a good episode, yeah. I think. And it's very yeah. well directed. Then she got another really good one in season two. And mm-hmm. then now she gets, you know, arguably the best one yet. Um, yeah. And I, I just, there were things about the show I loved. Everything with Cad Bane, getting Cad Bane's ending was great. And for, you know, for... Ooh. ooh. What? Continue. Sorry. That's interesting to me. Continue. That I liked it? Yeah, because I, I didn't, but I, I want to hear your Why, thoughts about no, it. No, I want to hear yours. No. Why didn't you like I it? I think it, I <clears> feel <throat> like, well, don't get me wrong, episode six with his reveal, awesome. Like, that was the one of the big things that I really loved about it this was show cool. was the reveal. But I felt like there was a lack of clarity as to why him being involved in the finale and him being toe-to-toe with Boba Fett was such a big deal. And I even rewatched, or not rewatched, I have watched Clone Wars for the first time recently. And I'm just not getting an understanding as to why this standoff between them was such a big deal, unless if I'm just really missing something. But I felt like it was the same problem that I've had with the majority of this show being like, okay, this is cool, but why is this happening? What purpose does it serve? And then it only cheapened it for me when they killed off Cad Bane when there could have been so much potential to keep this character going throughout live action Star Wars. So it it just didn't hit the mark for me, despite it being such a cool Mm -hmm. intro to having this character return. So I'm I'm curious why it worked for you then. For me, you know, I love Cad Bane. I loved how he looked. He looked aged and grizzled. He's supposed to be like 75 or 80 by this point. Like he's an old timer. Um, And he's, he's much older than, than Boba. I mean, he's a, 
he's in his prime in Clone Wars and Boba is right. a child. Yeah. Um, some of the dialogue too, I loved where he's calling him just it's a clone of his yeah. father. Like he's like, you're mm-hmm. not your dad. You never were your he dad. Just you're just him. a clone. That dialogue was fantastic. I thought he looked so much better. I thought people were like mad. He didn't look the exact same. And it's like, he's on a desert. It's now live action. And he's like 30 years older. Like he's not going to be the same. But he's darker not blue, blue enough. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, yeah. For me, it worked because the little George really does. And Dave do in Clone Wars is there is such an emphasis on how Boba wants to be Cad Bane. And he just isn't. And it's a young kid trying to now he, he kind of latches on to cat and some of those other bounty hunters as father figures. Now that he doesn't have one is, is how I r- love the clone wars and the, the parts of Boba. I do like, because there's a lot of kiddish stuff with him in the show. Mm-hmm. And so to me, the ending works. I did think the fight was a little underwhelming, but then I also remembered yeah. the Cad Bane is 75 years old and he's probably not moving as well. I get, hiring, I don't know. He shot him real quick. <laughs> I get hiring a big name. Um, bounty hunter for the pikes makes a lot of sense. Get a guy like Cad Bane who still can kind of can handle himself pretty well, but the name alone puts people on edge that Cad Bane is working for them and where Boba has lost that reputation. So their fight, I thought overall was a little underwhelming, but I loved the, the use of you have been like Boba has not been a ruthless. He's not a ruthless bounty hunter anymore. He doesn't just rely on what had made him a bounty hunter. Cad Bane does. And I, I like the development with Boba Fett and the Tuscans because that's how he beats him. His new thing. Cad Bane can handle him because he handled his dad and he handled, he handled his dad and he handled him. All what did he handle life. his, what did he handle his dad? Did I miss that as well? I'm just going off of dialogue and stuff from, from, from Clone Wars of, of him talking how his dad and him were rival bounty hunters okay. and, and okay. they, and that Cad Bane was always considered this massive, ruthless guy and, and just one of the mm-hmm. best bounty hunters to ever exist. And so I'm just going off of off of kind of some of those moments in, in Star Wars about how they had their own rivalry. And Cad Bane okay. tended to best his dad quite a bit. I mean, he best a lot of Jedi. Cad Bane is ruthless. And so I think there's there's a lot to that final fight, as underwhelming as it is. Um, you know, like I, it made me think, of the rebels fight spoiler for rebels with, with Obi-Wan and Maul, obviously not to the same extent, but I remember leaving that fight with a, with a little bit of a similar feeling. I was like, that fight was kind of underwhelming. And then I sat back and wanted to think more about it. And the Obi-Wan fight is, is light and day better, but I, I was kind of like, there's a little bit more for me at play here. I like that, that Boba is using a new skill because uh, um, all Cad Bane is saying is, you are a ruthless hunter. You're a bounty hunter. Why are you trying to do this and be something you're not? Like, I'm going to beat you every time because I know who I am. And then he beats him by becoming who he now is, which is which is not the ruthless bounty hunter. He has learned from the Tuscans. He's learned from his days as a bounty hunter. And I like that moment. Um, the best moment of maybe the entire show. And they said at the end that it was... I don't know if he was in the suit or not for, um, for, for, for the Mando, uh, for Din Djarin. I don't know if, if Pedro Pascal was in the suit or not. I have not seen, I I have not watched the, the Boba Fett behind the thing documentary yet, but, um, if he is, it makes so much sense how great this moment is. If he isn't, then people need to stop complaining about how, it has to be Pedro Pascal the whole time in the suit because this actor, if it was somebody else, did an incredible job. When she reveals and they're like running through the city trying to escape and they're on that little cart thing and she goes, oh, look who's here and pulls it down and it's Grogu. The, the whole body language of Mando in that shot is so incredible to me like i was mm-hmm. just laughing because it was just so awesome because he literally he's got his gun out he's like he's like what what he looks at he like the whole world stopped for him but he's like what and then the moment where he looks at the armor okay but now i gotta ask you forget boba fett kyle grogu had a choice what'd you think of his choice 
it makes sense if they want Mandalorian season three to keep going because Grogu is a big selling reason for that show doing so well uh, from a business standpoint. From a story standpoint, I kind of wish that could have gone differently. I'm always happy to see Baby Yoda back whenever I can, but I kind of would have liked to see how the progression of Grogu would have gone had he decided to stay and be a Jedi, but I don't know. Maybe season three is going to be the story about why he made that choice and maybe solving what ha- happened um, when Order uh, 66 happened and um, he Grogu got saved by some mysterious person. So maybe that's what the season will be and it's totally going to be fine. I have theories. Okay. Do you think it's Obi-Wan? Because that's my theory. You think Obi-Wan's going to train Grogu? No, that Obi-Wan um, saved Grogu. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, but okay. we've also uh, yeah. seen Obi Wan. We saw what his journey was. Um, mm-hmm. I, oh, man. Okay, let's let's do the save thing first. So I think the save thing is going to be one of two. Uh, I mean, I okay, maybe three. I think Obi Wan is possible, but we have seen what Obi Wan was doing during the fall. Like he sure. showed up, and and most everybody was dead. Yeah, yeah. and he sends the signal. If they wanted to keep Mace Windu alive, this is how you do it. He falls down Mm. out of the window. He's burnt up from the lightning. He's lost a hand and a saber. He's, he went through some shoot. He sees that happening and he like snags him out of there, uses the force to get Grogu out. That's a way you bring in, uh, bring him in. Um, I think, and I think fans would be okay with that. And if it's not that, I think it's a Jedi from the Clone Wars um, that we really like, or it's somebody from something else. Like if it's uh, like, as we've seen the fall in Bad Batch, you see what happens to um, Kanan from Rebels. You see his backstory. So I don't think it'll be him, but I do think the popularity of like, for of, um, um, uh, why can't I think of the name of the video game? Um the newest video game. I'm just blanking on the name of it. It's uh, so it wasn't. Um, it wasn't Rogue Squadron, was it? No, no that's also a very of? good game. Um, it's um, yeah. What was it's it called? The one with uh, the actor uh, who played um, he he plays Cal Kestis, and uh, yeah. it's it's the actor from Shameless and on Gotham who played the Joker. He's just an incredible actor. People Jedi loved Fallen. Him. Fallen Order, yes. People loved Fallen him Order. so yes, much, yes, yes. and you do go through backstories of his fall. Of, of of order 66 but people love him so much that there are heavy rumors that they are going to make a something with him and if they wanted to bring him in as the guy as a kid who like saves grogu i think that would be totally okay um yeah but i i think it'll be somebody like you know somebody we 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 know that we don't know you know what i mean it'll be a jedi it's like oh i remember him from those episodes um mm-hmm. um something like that, or maybe a clone that had his chip removed. One of the clones that got their chips removed and we don't, don't know what happened, but uh, that, those are my thoughts. If it is Obi-Wan, it's Obi-Wan. It'd be cool. You know, I'll lose my mind. I do think we're getting an Obi-Wan teaser today during the Super Bowl, And I am pumped. Even if it's a Disney plus teaser and it's like, looks what's coming to Disney plus like Netflix does. I think I'll lose my yeah. mind. We got a poster. We got the release date, usually a trailer shortly after. Um, it, it's just too coincidental with all these, it is. these things lining Super up. Super Bowl so. makes sense. Do you know how much Super Bowl ads were this year? Like, I don't know, $5 billion every 30 <laughs> seconds, something. Every, <laughs> every minute you breathe, companies, you give me money. That's what God, Goodell it, says. Basically. Anyway, so back to now the choice. I wish he would have stayed with Luke. I, I I am worried that it is a Disney exec, a new Bob, as I call him. I wonder if he comes in and goes, you can't have Grogu not in Mandalorian. The show is so popular and I want to sell more toys. And I really hope that isn't what it is, because to be honest, as a, you know, Disney's got plenty of problems. I enjoy, and I, you know, I think Kyle, you're right there with me. We do enjoy this atmosphere. We love the Hollywood and the production scene, and we like to hear this stuff of what's going on. I actually think Bob Iger 
did a really good job for the most part of trying to make sure that it was the story first in these big movies. Obviously he made a mistake with solo trying to change release dates and things like that. And I think he learned from that. And I think he's, he, he like went on all these interviews all the time and like really was open about that stuff. And I, I want to give him some credit because I liked Bob Iger as the head of Disney for a long time, because I thought he, he really let Kevin do Kevin's thing. He really was letting uh, Kathleen Kennedy do her thing, whether we liked it or not. But I wonder if this Bob is coming in and I don't want him to do the George problem, which George got too into the merchandising and said, we have to do this, 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 and this for toys. And I'm hoping that isn't what's going to happen. Now, my other theory, which makes this work, because I always thought maybe in Mando season three, we would do a time skip and maybe we would meet Grogu again and he'd be a little older and he'd actually be able to communicate and talk after training with Luke. And then maybe he would be like a Padawan status because even Luke says, you know, you, your species age is very different. And, and I loved that conversation in, in Boba Fett because he says, you are going to outlive him. You're going to outlive him. You can be attached all you want, but you're going to outlive Din Djarin. You're going to outlive me. And the choice of the saber was awesome. The seeing Yoda's saber was so cool. And yeah, yeah. But here's my thought. Here's, here's my hope. John Favreau comes into the meeting and he goes, I don't want to keep Grogu with Luke. I want, this is what I, this is what I wanted the sequels to do. And we didn't get with, with Kylo. Because I, we had always seen, we'd always, my thought was we'd always, we had always seen a Skywalker not be good. We've seen a Skywalker fall, come back. We've seen a Skywalker be tempted, not turn. I wanted to see a Skywalker go full evil the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, we're obviously we won't get evil because Din Djarin's just a bounty hunter, but he does have a lightsaber. He's got the dark saber. And mm. he talks about how heavy it is how he doesn't understand how to handle the crystal and things like that. And we even saw that with, um, with our, our villain, um, Esposito's villain, who's again, name is escaping me. Don't make me film so early after I wake up. I don't remember things. Um, Moff Gideon. I just remembered Moff Gideon. He very struggled to control it. And they have a whole episode and a whole sequence dedicated to the difficulty of the saber. I wonder if, if if Grogu goes, look, I know I know he has a lightsaber. I, as cool as Yoda's is, I can go be with the guy I want, still train with a lightsaber, just differently. And I think if whether we get a time skip or not, he is going to continue his training with the Mandalorian, and he is going to have the dark saber. And I think we're going to get a different version of Yoda that we've never seen and I am here for it because we so haven't think, seen this. So you said, think baby Yoda had this thought while he was making his choice. He was like, my buddy's got a lightsaber. Like, he's, why like do- <laughs> Kyle, he's 50 years old. He's thinking better like, than we ever can. You kidding well, me? Well, ever will. <laughs> he's 50. The man has seen so much experience and he can't, and he's, he is getting older. And he can't change because, himself. <laughs> because in those episodes, he's walking a lot more. He's really not as much as a baby as he is an infant. Uh, like he is starting to really start to move. And I, I think a time skip is needed. I am ready to move off of this version of Grogu. I want to see him change. I do. I, I don't, sure. I, I love the baby Grogu. I love him so much, but I, I am ready for him. You know, you, you see fan art of like what Yoda looked like in his prime. Like he's shredded. He's got a lightsaber. <laughs> he's got dreadlocks. Yeah. I want that Yoda. <laughs> I want that Yoda, Kyle. I want a Yoda. Could you, could you, you imagine, want fan art Yoda? <laughs> could you imagine if the scene to Mandalorian season three is a, is a five year time skip. He's now like a, in like a, a teenager's body. Like, you know, he's, he's old enough to start being Padawan dominant here. Could you imagine if it opens up and it like is Mando flies through, he's riding on his back with a black saber ready to go. He like jumps (laughs) off, starts whipping guys. They're on Mandalore taking over the planet. I'd lose my mind. (laughs) 
it's turned into a wet dream over here. It's, um, it's turned into such a wet dream uh, uh, theory. But I, I, I got to be real with you. I don't like. You were gonna say you saber. hate it. I, I'm not gonna go that far as to say it, but I don't know. Like I just, it's been a weapon that I've seen throughout uh, Clone Wars. These star, Rebels. these things in Star Wars lately that I just don't care about. Like it just is such a meaningless weapon. And I know there's meaning behind. It. I know there's meaning behind. Meaningless it weapon. The, I, I know that it's not necessarily a meaningless weapon, but it still animal. comes off as a meaningless weapon. Like, it just keeps nope. getting passed around so much where I'm like, doesn't even matter anymore. Like, let's just let uh, Jin keep the Darksaber and move on from it. Like, I'm ready to do things that are outside of Darksaber stuff, to me anyway. But it, this is only a theory. And You're full of crap. Be, if this is a really cool baby one, but it's Yoda. just a weapon where I'm like, I don't If care. Baby Yoda's <laughs> out here slinging around a dark saber. You're going to you're going to poop your pants. You're going to be so I mean, excited. Are you it, kidding it, it, me? Like you said, it is a wet dream that I could honestly be on board for once I see it, but just between Rebels and then all of a sudden it appearing in Mandalorian, I just was like, man, I just don't care about this thing. Like I never did. And I, I do. and again, I know there Star Wars fans, I know that there's meaning behind it. I know there's importance to it. I get it. Cancel Kyle. Just for me, Cancel him. Get him off I the show. There's only I, eight I, people that watch, but get him off the show. Seven of the eight will hate me, and the one will be like, yeah, sure, he can leave. The one is your <laughs> We like Alex more anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, George, George always, I think, his idea and Dave's idea for what the Darksaber was was more like an Excalibur. You know, it's it's the sword of what because the Mandalorians are supposed to be like Earthlings. There's they're supposed to be what what our race would be in the Star Wars universe. How we would adapt to fight these Jedi, things like that. Okay, and yeah. so it, it, like the original wielder of the saber is supposed to be kind of like their King Arthur, and the guy who can pull the sword from the stone will now be the king of the planet. Although instead mm-hmm. of pulling it from the stone, it's now winning it in battle. And that's how yeah. I've always interpreted. And I think that was the point of it. Uh, I just think Yoda flying around with that saber would be cool because it's different than what we've seen. And I, the I fan just like art for that different. would be wild. <laughs> I do get though, too. People are also not excited that we went back to Luke so much. I know there's a lot of fans who were like, this galaxy is so tiny and I wish it was so much bigger. And there is a part of me that does agree with that. I, 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 as much as I did enjoy the Boba Fett show quite a bit, I loved those episodes with Mandalorian and Luke, but I do get that a little bit, which is makes me excited for things like a rogue squadron and, and, and other ideas they have Um, like the Acolyte show. What the heck could that possibly be? The Acolyte show like visions was one of the coolest things we've seen in star Wars um, in a long time, because it was all so different and not connected different versions Mm -hmm. of, of, of these stories, which was so Mm -hmm. cool. And we still got the Kevin Feige star Wars movie and all that stuff. So do you have anything else or should we wrap this up? Um, yeah, I just wish that the Boba Fett show could have actually been the Boba Fett show and like expanded on the character more. And those two episodes with Mando are awesome, but those probably could have been like, the first two episodes of season three you know no. what i mean no. <laughs> no but i'm kind of just repeating at this point what others have already said time and time again so i'll just leave my thoughts at this the show it's it's fine it, but it just doesn't work for me and if they don't continue with the season two i will be perfectly okay with that like i'm fine not... with boba fett it's just the mysterious character anyway it's not as divisive as last jedi but it is pretty divisive i see people who love this show and i see people who really do not like this show um i think it's fine i think there are some of the best things in star wars i've ever seen in this show and we don't get those things if we don't get this show so i just uh, i'm here for it but anyway guys yeah. what do you think of boba fett comment below let us know where to like subscribe comment share all that great stuff thank you to patrons go get some merch i'll link in the description and as always uh, thank you for watching mom see you guys <laughs>